Good afternoon, and thank you for attending our webinar today, um, uh, where we're going to be taking you through a deeper look at uh, CME technology and uh, assessment program, and share with you some additional details on the application process, along with what the initial funding supports. Uh, just a few housekeeping notes before we begin. We're recording today's session. Everyone who's registered will get an email with a link to the on-demand version and a copy of today's presentation slides within the next few days. The session will run for a total of 60 minutes, which includes time for Q&A. If you have any questions throughout the webinar, please feel free to submit them through the Q&A panel on your GoToWebinar console so that we can add or address them towards the end of this uh, presentation. And if for some reason we don't have time to address all of your questions in today's live event, please be assured that we will follow up with you directly following the webinar. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Bill Bruton and I am the account executive or an account executive for Shea Global. And I have over 10 years experience helping clients align solutions to some of their most pressing business needs. Topics, uh, the topic of today's webinar should be pretty interesting to anyone looking for ideas on how to access some government funding for technology. Um, I'll be your host today for, for the webinar. As part of my hosting duties, I will quickly introduce our company along with today's presenter. A little bit about Shea. Uh, Shea, uh, at Shea we believe, um, uh, at Shea our, our customers, um, we sorry, we challenge our customers to look beyond the status quo to make uh, their, their business better. We believe any um, and every business has the potential for excellence and we're passionate about getting our customers to achieve their highest potential. Um, Shea Global is an international company. We support organizations in 25 countries from offices in Canada, the United States, UK, India, as well as the Philippines. Uh, as part of Ontario's public health safe, uh, public safety guidelines during the COVID pandemic, uh, Shape Global is classified as an essential service according to the provincial definition. We will continue to stay open to service our clients as we are a global provider of ERP, CRM, business intelligence and demand-driven technologies, as well as solutions focused on transforming supply chains. Our customers or our team consists of a diverse group of experts with a lot of years of experience who have helped clients across many different industries. Uh, most of our projects are within the manufacturing and wholesale distribution space. Uh, we also focus in areas like uh, retail, aerospace and defense, automotive, uh, consumer goods, electronics, fashion, food and beverage, machinery and equipment, medical devices, chemical plastics and rubbers, as well as pharmaceuticals. Without further delay, I'd like to introduce you to our speaker today, Kevin. Um, Kevin Hollis has been an account executive with Shea Global since uh, 2015 and has been helping companies innovate and gain profit profitability from ERP technology for about 30 years now. Kevin has a double major in management and economics from the University of Guelph uh, and began his career as a management consultant where he worked, to a, worked for about five years uh, focused on setting up ERP and reporting systems in a process manufacturing and distribution environment. Um, Kevin? Great, thanks so much, Bill. Uh, and uh, welcome everybody, excited to spend some time with you today talking about the, the CME program. Uh, I think you can make me presenter there. And um, so the agenda today is um, give you a quick overview of what the CME technology assessment program is. Uh, talk about who can qualify, what those qualification criteria are, and once you're approved, what does the process look like? And then how can we help you through the assessment? And we'll walk through a sample scenario of, of doing a business review that helps make the business case uh, so that your application is actually quite successful and set some benchmarks for you. And then we'll wrap up with any questions that come out of uh, today's session. So we'll start with a bit of the program overview. Uh, so the Canadian Manufacturers Exporters Association uh, introduced in previous reiterations, a program that was previously called maybe SMART. Now they're calling it the Technology Assessment and Adoption Diagnostics. That's uh, an opportunity to work and be supported by the Canadian Manufacturers Association 
in working with a qualified service provider such as uh, Shea Global. And uh, part of the reason we are a qualified service provider to that, and I may use the words interchangeably today, is blueprint and technology assessment. Uh, regardless of the grant program, SHEA always kicks off a project with a blueprinting or assessment to make sure we know what we're doing. The purpose of the uh, technology assessment and the grant program that's been created by the federal government and being delivered through the Canadian Manufacturers and Exporters Association is to help stimulate investment and innovation in our manufacturing sector. Part of the primary concern is that many leaders and companies have a sense that they can do more in their business and be more innovative, but aren't necessarily familiar with the business case and how they quantify that. So statistically, they feel about 40% of companies are uncertain about what they'll do and how they will innovate, what the return on investment would look like. And uh, it slows, I guess, our investment in innovation down. So with, the, with this funding program of $25,000, you can put that towards 100% uh, of the costs of doing this assessment, including things like travel and accommodation as well too. And uh, it's great to help you understand what you can do in the company in terms of innovating that. Some of the potential benefits of the innovation and, and why the government wants to stimulate this in the economy is to help our customers or companies and manufacturing do things like lower operating costs. We're going to walk through a scenario of that. Uh, there may be overhead or direct costs as well, too. Also, typically by using innovation, we can increase our product quality. And Canadian has a, Canada has a reputation for good quality products. I was talking to a food processor this week, for example, that uh, is setting up to export food to China. And the reason being is the quality is consistent coming out of Canada versus buying even local in that environment. So that, that's good for our reputation. Typically, when you start to innovate and you invest in that, you have higher innovation capacity as well. So if you use good systems and good processes, then you can typically adopt and change uh, as our world has changed. Most people were impacted pretty significantly in the last four months by COVID. And hopefully everybody on the call had all the innovation in place to do remote work and keep their businesses running. Um, also through innovation, typically you get better visibility to your customers on your quote to cash process, your available to deliver process, and ultimately you can increase uh, customer satisfaction materially through, uh, through innovation. So we'll talk a little bit about what the qualification criteria is and the application process to take advantage of this. Um, the first step is pre-qualification. So as a company today, what you would want to do is go to the CME landing page for this program and click on the eligibility intake form. What's going to happen there is just going to ask you a couple questions, um, company location, and you'll have to upload a couple years of financial statements to validate that you're a viable business. In that eligibility application form, you can also indicate which qualified service provider you wish to work with. Uh, we hope that's Shea, uh, but there are maybe other innovation quality uh, solution providers there too that, that complement what we do or offer different forms of innovation as well too. So you can actually potentially work with up to two or more qualified service providers. Once you are pre-approved based on the criteria, then along with your qualified service provider, again, hopefully Shay in this case, we would jointly submit a proposal with you based on a business review that says here are the business processes areas that we want to do our assessment on. They will review that and then give approval, uh, notify you, and then we would go ahead and con conduct the assessment. When the assessment is completed, then the report is delivered to you as a customer. We're also obligated uh, to share that output also with the Canadian Manufacturers Association so they get a sense of the value that you would achieve or potential to achieve on it. But uh, once, once you do that, they will reimburse you for the expenses of the assessment. To qualify for this uh, reiteration of the technology assessment, the current one is open to companies in Southern Ontario listed most of the major regions there, but in essence, stretching from Ottawa right down to Windsor, you must uh, be incorporated federally or provincially for at least the last two years and demonstrate financial stability. So that's the part about them wanting you to upload a couple years of financial statements. 
Uh, right now, this is targeted at companies that are at least 15 employees um, and, and under 500 employees. You don't have to be a member of the Canadian Manufacturers Exporters Association to qualify for this. And um, the only caveat is you, in terms of qualification or funding is you can't double dip. So they will pay 100% of the technology assessment costs, uh, but you can't apply other government grants to the technology assessment. If you have other grant programs going, such as uh, funding or training or research and development and shred and those other types of credits, that doesn't conflict. You just can't double dip in terms of funding on assessment when they're already paying 100% of the costs of it. In terms of eligible activities that you might want to consider as you're doing your technology assessment are, again, typically looking at business processes and where you can increase productivity, look at process flows, are there bottlenecks in the business that uh, cause bag clogs and, um, and ultimately output restrictions? Are there things in your business that are resulting in poor quality, therefore higher costs and poor throughput? Or sometimes increasing quality and in certifications such as ISO certifications can increase your eligibility for exports or to get into new markets, especially if you're going to sell into aerospace and defense or food or highly uh, legislated and regulated industries. Other areas that you can look at would be waste reduction, uh, environmental impacts, green effects, uh, energy reduction. So even if you've got maybe older machines, they're consuming energy, lighting systems as well as that. One of the areas that's covered specifically in this program that's kind of nice is it does encompass information and management systems. And the reason we feel that's quite important is that in order to get the outcomes of a business, you typically need the outputs of a, a good ERP system or a business intelligence system or a good sales forecasting and CRM system to manage a business. And it's been said before, you can't really manage what you can't measure. So a lot of times if there's areas of your business that require innovation, it's improving the measurement skills uh, to improve the management of those activities. So again, the form at the CME site looks something like this, just name, company, address information, validates your manufacturer and you're based in one of the city areas. Here's the link that will come out to you with, with the form and PDF as well too. And again, this uh, recording will be sent out to everybody if you do want to follow up on that and we'll be happy to walk through that. So the approval process would go, um, submit the pre-application, uh, they will approve or, or disapprove you, but assuming you approve, there's a contribution agreement where it means they'll pay up to 100% to a cap of $25,000. Once that uh, is established that you qualify, that you get aligned with the uh, qualified service provider, Shea Global or other, um, we work with you to submit a full proposal that says, here's the areas we're going to cover. They will then approve that and give you a letter to proceed and then we've got about 90 days to complete the technical assessment, which is about the right window. We, we find these typically take about two months uh, to complete with a little bit of uh, kickoff time and a little bit of wrap up time working with you to go over the findings, the recommendations, the ROI considerations, and then also map out the what next. So once you're approved, uh, the, the what next is then delving into the process of, of doing the technology assessment. So when we get, uh, when it kind of rubber meets the road, uh, it typically looks like consultants coming on site, working with you and your subject matter experts through a process. Again, it could be a quote to cash, a plan to produce, a procure to pay. Area that we typically see challenge in businesses are you know, procurement processes, uh, lack of visibility, uh, too much inventory building up because of that, and uh, and often then bottlenecks in a system. So when we when we are approved and then we then come in to do the assessment, we'll walk through a number of processes with you based on the scope of the engagement, figure out the cost not to solve the problem is the term I like to, to use, or how bad the pain is, and prioritize where we should focus our efforts on. Uh, simple little examples might be if you're still paying people by checks, what's the value to put in electronic funds transfer? If you only do 10 checks a month, there's not a big value. 
but if you do 10,000 checks a month, then you probably already have EFT in place kind of thing. So through this process uh, of working with a qualified service provider, again, they would look at your manufacturing processes, other processes in the business, could be HR and onboarding as well too, and we look for the classic uh, areas for improvement, whether it's defects rates, overproduction, wait times, not utilized talent. Um, and engineering is a good example where you might have companies paying high quality qualified and highly paid engineers to rekey bills of materials between one system and an update and another system. And that, that's a good example, an engineer to order, make to order environments that um, a, lot of, a lot can be improved in. Um, other areas, unnecessary movements, excess inventory, and excess processing that may or may not be required in-house. Based on those, we put together a document that helps put a roadmap or technology assessment in there. The objectives of, of doing such an assessment really is to look at the current and future requirements of the business. When we say re-engineering business processes, it's almost like you want to reimagine how your business works today. And one of the benefits of working with a qualified service provider is potentially to challenge you, as, as Bill was saying, is to not do what you do now with a prettier application or do what you do now with a, you know, a different scanner versus something else, but do things that you maybe don't do today. Uh, we also want to look at, um, in that assessment, what are the risks of doing these? Uh, typically, out of an assessment, you'll have some things that are low effort and high value, and that's what uh, we would call low-hanging fruit, things that you should probably do right away. Other initiatives might be high value, but higher risk, like a full ERP, ERP replacement is a bigger project and a much more strategic initiative, and not something that you're going to do in 30, 60, 90 days, but probably do in you know three to 12 months, depending on the scope of it. Typically, out of the blueprint or technology assessment, you also look at and consider options as to how you can approach different challenges in your business and right size those options to your business because what one size doesn't fit all uh, which is which is very important and, and why it's good to consider different solutions so if we assume we've been approved and we're now ready to kick off doing the assessment the process again would start with uh, a series of formal interviews Typically, uh, a consultant or two on site might be a day or two, might be two weeks, depending on the size, the business and complexities. Uh, those formal interviews happen with your internal subject matter experts, whether they're finance, operations, purchasing, procurement, quality, HR, in, in reviewing the challenges in each and every department. When that's completed, the information gathered typically comes back into what we've referred to as lab time. So we consolidate all the findings, see where challenges are common across different areas of the business, sharing information and files and security, come back and clarify any gaps and priorities in that assessment and lab time. And then we solution. So it's not just here's your pains and, and that. Typically, we want to come back and the solutioning refers to coming up with two or three options as to how you might address uh, solving the pains in the business and achieving the opportunities out of that. At the end of that solutioning and a little time internally, then we are able to come back and present the findings, the recommendations, summaries of options of how you would proceed. And in there include uh, validation of the cost not to solve the problem, but also options of the cost to solve the problem. And hopefully the cost uh, to solve the problem is much less than the cost not to solve the problem. So the deliverables are the findings, the recommendations, the architecture of the, of the future state, uh, and the approaches and options that you can take towards that. And including in the approach and options would be actual dollars tied to what those options might look like. Um, up on your screen, if you can see it now, is, is a sample technology assessment. Uh, this is about a 100-page document. They vary from as little as 15 or 20 pages, depending on the size of the scope, typically up to about 100 pages. What's in this document, as I kind of mentioned, is the first 15 or 10 pages will be summary of the current state, overview of the business, and some of the challenges at a high level finding and recommendations. 
but then typically we would go into each department, whether it's HR, procurement, and have a section on findings and recommendations based on volumes of work and, and challenges in the business. And an important part of this is, is the collaborative effort that goes into, as you can see kind of mid lower screen here, new process maps. So the idea is we don't wanna do things the way we always did, that's not innovating. The concept is changing the process, changing the tools we use to be innovative and reduced waste. And uh, ultimately, you know, that can look like consolidating multiple databases into one source of truth. Uh, many people on this phone prob or on this call probably have scenarios where they have customer databases and a shipping system and an accounting system and a collection system, supplier information and a procurement application potentially or inventory system as well too. And again, if that's the scenario, ultimately there's lots of opportunities for visibility and, and gains and efficiencies. So th this is a good sample of a deliverable of a technology assessment it is collaborative, it leverages internal subject matter experts, it leverages consultants and subject matter experts that have worked in industry and consulting that understand a lot of the technologies in use today. And then it collectively, when you as a customer or company say, yeah, that, that makes sense, that's going to help our business. Um, a couple of the last pages of this document in the deliverable that we would bring out would be, here's how we would recommend phasing in a go forward state. In the scenario of the one that we just looked at, the, the resulting solution was, uh, you know, consolidating everything into a new ERP system or a new version of an ERP system and, and having this in your phase one scope and how to phase in moving from current state to better, better, best kind of scenario. In some cases, the purpose of phasing in a future state is maybe bandwidth and internal resources. Sometimes it's dependencies on things that you need to do in phase one. A good example is you can't really set up an e-commerce store for B2B until you have your inventory and suppliers and customers all set up. So if there's a dependency there, you may or may not choose to pull that into phase one. Um, in our approach, when we map out the, the technology assessment and we map out these phases, again, it's collaborative. Uh, if senior management says it's extremely important to us to pull, pull bid proposal management into phase one, then by all means, we're gonna pull it into phase one based on potential to achieve that and ROI and minimal risks. And we would say the fixed fee for this phase is, is this dollar or this dollar range um, I'll come back to that in just a second. So if this is how we're gonna phase this in and we say phase one and we agree looks like this is terms of best return on the dollar, lowest risk, high value, then typically we would say a range here and I'm just gonna use numbers of 100 to 200,000. And what that would look like in terms of fixed fee, it'd be for 100,000 you can do this, for 150,000 you can do this, and for 200,000 you can do you know, basic standard or premium level of phase one. Um, there's probably some questions around that on the customer side versus who delivers that solution to you. What, what that would mean is if you were going to put in a brand new say ERP system today and your internal team isn't familiar with that, we'd always recommend go with a standard or premium level solution so your, your ERP partner helping out there would be accountable for assisting or completing things like data migration, forms customization, use uh, test case scenarios, and training. Um, you know, if we get out to phase three of a project and now internally a customer has good skill sets internally and good subject matter experts on the products, you might say, well, we want to add quality management as a good example, uh, as a phase three. You might say, well, we, we can just use basic support from you as a supplier. We'll handle you know, data migration and, and user training and use case, case, uh, case scenarios as an, as an example, all right? So that's, that's part of the deliverable is, here's what we feel will solve the problem, and here's what we feel is the cost uh, the co yeah, the cost to solve the problem. 
what often has been a challenge in a, a talking to different people who are looking at this program is sometimes these assessment don't include, well, what's the cost if I don't do this? What's, what's the ROI or what's the benefit? So here's what we'll talk a little bit about is how we can help you in the assessment and business review. So before we do the complete technology assessment, um, our blueprint, we, I, Bill, somebody on the team here or your qualified service provider would do a business review with you. But the business review is, is it's chatting, it's getting to know you, it's bringing some experience and some loaded questions to a meeting to say, how do you do this? Uh, what is the value of this? And find evidence of a problem. Um, with my business consulting hat on from years back, the problem needs to translate into cash flow, cost savings, or throughput so that we know how it's going to impact the balance sheet or the income statement. So this getting to know each other, knowing to new resources, how you got to where you are today. Also other things like what's the vision of the company? Has COVID changed your world? Has going to e-commerce and needing to be business to business compliant changed your world? Is regulation coming into your world that's changing it as well too? So I'll walk through a sample ROI assessment that we would work through with you. This is in the business review. This little sample scenario uh, we would walk through with you at no charge. This is again parting to get to know each other and building the business case. So the, the funny little pictures in here do have a story behind them. The numbers I'm using uh, are ones that I've walked through with an actual customer that was $100 million last year and targeting to be $130 million in about three years. And if you're a $10 million business, you, you know, just take one zero off all these numbers. Or if you're a $1 million business, take two zeros off, the, off this. If you're 50 million, just divide it in half. Um, but for easy logistics here, traditionally what we see is a $100 million company that's growing. We don't want to buy tight shoes for a growing child. So in my 30 years experience, the number is usually going to be that company for a holistic ERP solution, somewhere between 1.1 million and one and three quarter million. Now, today you may already have a good ERP system. You may be sitting at standard. So you maybe don't need a rip and replace approach today. You're just trying to get your business to innovate from being a standard level company to a premium level and world-class operator. The other part of the funny little picture story is we do see this often that if you buy a basic solution and you're a growing business, you could outgrow that. In this scenario, the bicycle doesn't upgrade to a rocket, right? So if somebody's on a bicycle today and they say, yes, I'm ready to innovate and I want to go up to this level, you may need to be prepared to replace this, the older system with something that can meet your needs today, bring high value to the business, and set a platform for you to upgrade into the future. Now, as Bill was saying, sometimes we lose people here to say, well, geez, that's a lot of money. I don't want to spend that amount of money. So we want to go into the ROI dialogue. If, again, these are real numbers, apply to a business, shouldn't be too unrealistic. Um, we would talk about, in the case of a $100 million business, what are your current days receivable? In this scenario, um, I'm just demonstrating that for every one day you can bring your receivables down at that level, you will put a quarter million dollars back in the bank account. One of the things that comes up when you take the deeper dive into the business review is, is it really 20 days? And one thing I do find is that we report accounts receivable in days since we issued the invoice. One of the challenges we do sometimes come across in manufacturing is work in progress is also on the balance sheet that hasn't been invoiced yet. And sometimes the challenge is getting the invoice out the day, out a day or five days earlier, and then collecting within your 20 days. So you can also bring cash into the business through work in progress. In our scenario here, uh, we're going to say our cost of goods sold is 77%. In this scenario, the client we're talking to has 120 days of inventory, which is $25 million. And the question immediately comes up, why do you have so much inventory? Uh, and it might be a cultural thing, it might be long lead times, it might be the volatile world we sit in, 
but we do know world-class standards are probably closer to 90 days or 100 days inventory. In this case, the executive of the company we were talking with agrees that bringing it down five days is a pretty conservative objective, but that would put $1 million back in the bank for 1.3 million. They also said a little more aggressive target would be maybe get it down to 105 days where we'd actually put as much as three million or three and a half million almost back in the bank now. So those are real numbers. I often say that's cash, that's your cash. It's sitting in receivables versus sitting in your bank and, and being put to better use. In some cases, that's showing how you can free up cash to do an ERP project or to do an innovation project. So the opportunity here is reduce working capital by over a million dollars. Uh, what are the challenges? Why don't people do this? Um, maybe they're not billing earned revenue. Maybe it's long lead times, poor planning. So how do you address? That? We would look at things like how do you do material requirement planning or demand-driven material requirement planning? How do you do capacity planning and identify bottlenecks so you're not sitting on inventory and you get better throughput? And the expected results would be 1.3 to 3.4 million dollars back in the bank account in this scenario. The next thing that, that's good to talk about is, is cost savings. In this case, if you did three up, free up $3 million and you're carrying costs on a line of credits 4%, then that's going to save you $100,000 a year. Um, the reality is if we bring inventory down by 4% or, or by that amount and can save 4%, there's also other savings like the overhead of warehousing, logistics, and maintaining the overheads of, of all that $25 million inventory. Another interesting area of business of cost savings is expediting. Uh, it's interesting when I talk to owners and CFOs of business, how much they say they spend in necessary overtime, expediting costs to get material into the business or out of the business to meet deadlines. In this case, the client said on about 300,000 a year and conservatively that should come down by 20%, not a big chunk, but puts money in the bank. In this case, we have 300 employees, Question was, what's your annual payroll? Average burdens, uh, just uh, about 65,000, 20% cost to sales. So then we start to look at some very simple efficiencies. One of the questions would be, today, if the scenario is the mail comes in or a PDF file comes in and you print it out and you put it on somebody's desk for approval, um, there's a lot of paper case. And you can do things today like use optical character reading. So when somebody emails you a PDF of an invoice, you can drag and drop it into accounts payable. It will read the invoice, know that the bill came from Hydro, what the dollar amount is, and route it to the facilities manager for approval versus if it was a lawyer bill, knowing to route it to the legal department for approval or to your president for approval. So in this scenario, um, the person we we're talking to agreed that you know, out of their back office administration, they could reduce that by one and a half full-time equivalents to free up about $100,000 a year. In this case, um, it was an engineering manufacturing company, and there was a lot of pains around product life cycle management and quality, getting CAD drawings into the materials, managing revisions, versioning, uh, and recall processes. And this was a, a big savings area for them to potentially reduce full-time equivalents or reuse to play them uh, by about 0.8% or 2.3 uh, full-time equivalents. So some people say, I'm not looking to get rid of employees though, so I don't know that this is going to apply to me. The value is, is that if you're gonna grow from 100 million to 130 million, is you just found one and a half and 2.3 employees that you don't need to go higher. And, and that's probably where the savings will kick in as you're targeting to grow to the 100 to $130 million company. Another interesting area when we look at innovation today and, and a big picture, you know, talking ERP, HR systems, uh, at 300 employees and a, you know maybe a five to 10% turn rate every year, you're looking at between 15 and 30 hires. It was interesting in this case, very conservatively, we assessed that we could probably reduce bad hires by two a year through better employee management, onboarding, and every bad hire conservatively cost uh, $10,000. Now, arguably, I've been told by some senior managers that a bad hire costs at least $30,000 by the time you train them and put all that into onboarding. 
So in this scenario, the opportunity to reduce expediting expense, reduce overhead, improve HR processes, and the challenges that are preventing this are demand visibility, the legacy non-integrated ERP silos. What is the strategy? Well, this is more heavy lifting, maybe putting in an ERP system with material requirement planning, product lifecycle management, finance, and HR, and workflows for approvals and sales and operation planning. That's a lot of heavy lifting, but quite strategic. But in this scenario, the expected results would be a savings of almost a half a million dollars a year, or 1.3 million over three years. Another key area is throughput. And we know that in a manufacturing environment, employees are not 100% efficient. We also know machinery is not 100% efficient and 100% might not be a reasonable goal. Uh, but if we improve efficiencies on labor and equipment, in this case, by only 1%, that would increase sales by $1 million. And for every $1 million increase in sales, we'll also drop another $230,000 to the bottom line of the business. So basically the opportunity and throughput is another 23 cents for every dollar increase of sales going to the bottom line. And again, the challenges are material and equipment and people aren't in the right place at the right time. That usually comes from visibility, a poor procurement, a lack of capacity planning and materials management. So again, the strategic approach to that would uh, put in a proper material requirement planning, master production scheduling, which allows for the proper people to be in the right place, not as well as the material, and look at shop floor data collection in real time uh, for visibility. And then part of that reason for visibility is if things change or machines break, you can move things around a lot quicker and, and reduce dead time uh, very significantly. The expected results here in this case would be to increase throughput between one and three percent, which is another $230,000 to $700,000 a year. Um, in summary, you know, the cash flow would be potentially money back in the bank between one and three million dollars, and the gains to the business over three years would be between 2.2 and three and a half million dollars. We started with, this is what I think it's gonna to cost to solve the problem. And all of a sudden the cost of one million to one and three quarter million is a fraction of what you potentially can gain from putting in the system. Again, not everybody's gonna need a, a full ERP system or rip and replace. It might just be a case of you need to upgrade the nose cone on your rocket to add a char for better onboarding. And it, it may be a component of, of adding to the base you already have, assuming you have a good base to grow on. If you don't, one of the, the kickers to the value of your business is, is you know, we got to get rid of that little bicycle or QuickBooks in the back end of whatever it is you might be doing today and, and put in a real, a real system. Um, some of the, you know, things on the premium solution for manufacturing, get into things like manufacturing execution systems, where you actually integrating machines right back into the, the back end system. We had a scenario recently with a customer in electronics manufacturing. Um, they bought a, 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 a solution called Juki, J-U-K-I. And what Juki is, it's, it's like a great, it's like a minivan, it's about the size of a minivan. And it's like a jukebox that they have reels of transistors or solenoids or whatever that go into this jukebox, kind of like records would in a jukebox. And when they need that rule of transistors to go into production, they go up to the juke box and need those transistors. The reel comes out and it goes into a little robot that hooks up to the machine and spools them into the, the production line. That machine alone replaced 14 full-time people who were managing putting away and tracking and taking that information around. So that, that was one key cost savings. Um, the other key cost savings or innovation thing there is we were able to hook that machine up to their ERP system. So when the spool comes back into the Juki system, uh, the X-ray scanner um, indicates how many pieces got used in production and updates the production order. Nobody manually tracks how many pieces got used. 
and it also does a x-ray real-time physical count of what's left on the reel so that your inventory is 100% accurate and, and real time. So that's pretty material because a lot of challenges, again, come from visibility. Do we know what we have and do we know where it is? So in the business review of what we do, Bill or I or your other qualified service provider would, first of all, walk through this process with you at a high level, say, is there a reason to innovate? Uh, in this scenario, which is a real scenario, there, there's definitely reason to innovate. And it's a typical story um, in, a, in a big bang approach. What potentially uh, would you expect from Shea in, in the process? We and or your qualified service provider brings in a team. When, when we do a, an assessment or any type of project, whether it's the assessment or after the assessment, a project manager would handle everything from kickoff to sign off on completion. We uh, use different subject matter experts in say manufacturing, finance, HR to come in and do business process reviews. Uh, collect that information with the solution architecture to design the future state. In the event that you do decide to go ahead with that future state, then other players in the team, such as the consultants, analysts, the support development team would then get involved. They may also be consulted on during a technology assessment, especially if there's things like integration between the machines and software. Um, again, you might consult with the developer to say what kind of efforts are involved in that, are the tools in place, is it is it compatible? What other skill sets we would bring to the team on these projects to make them successful is the business process review, you know, solutioning and blueprinting, which is similar, to, well, the same as the technology assessment by the CME. Then, then we don't stop there. You know, we continue with consulting and implementation, workflow automation, integration. We also build out applications for customers that are very um, specific to their needs. We uh, we had a scenario recently with a customer in construction that basically, uh, let's say they build roads and they get paid on how much of the road has been completed. Uh, the scenario was they're taking a lot of information and measurements and that. Uh, we wrote a little app that they can run on their cell phone and at the end of the day, the project manager walks to the end of the road, pushes a button on their cell phone, it gets their GPS location, and realize that that day they've completed two more miles of the road, and the invoice goes out automatically. So one push of the button, we've done two more miles of road, the invoice left the building, um, nobody touched it. That's huge, incredible savings and efficiencies and gets the cash in the bank quicker. A good example of reducing your work and process from a billable perspective, assuming you still get paid based on days from the invoice and when it went out. A lot of things that are you know, some buzzwords today are things like uh, digital transformation, industry 4.0. These are things that definitely we would bring to the table. Uh, you do want to consider scenarios such as uh, IoT and connecting sensors into equipment you may manufacture today. How does that help you improve customer service? Um, one of the clients I was talking with earlier today makes harvesting equipment as a good example. You know, equipment with machines, motors in it. And uh, they want to be proactive in offering service and maintenance programs for the equipment they sell. So part of the visioning was, well, why don't we have a sensor in every piece of equipment you sell it when the oil light comes on, you know, and if the customer doesn't address it within 24 hours, you're picking up the phone and calling them to prevent uh, any damage. Also ongoing support, the uh, innovation assessment's the first step in, in going into a new, new world. So... The approach that we have is a very proven solution. We, we've always done blueprints called technology assessments by the uh, CMEs. And um, the methodology of doing a blueprint to set priorities, set expectations, and set a fixed fee budget uh, allows you to uh, proceed in that manner. And, and that helps us achieve operational excellence. If you engage with Ashe and, and many other companies, one thing to consider is uh, the depth of the team. Uh, we do have, and just embellishing a little bit on, on Bill's introduction, uh, support desk uh, across all of our offices. So some of our customers only need nine to five support, some need uh, 24 five. We have a couple on 24 seven. 
Um, but our mission is to build a long-term relationship that starts with understanding your business, helping you implement projects, and then going into ongoing uh, support, sales and operational planning, and helping you get the outcomes that you wanted to once we put a system in or help you get the outputs that you're looking for to manage the business. That's a quick dive into the CME program. At this point, uh, Bill, I'll pack the back over to you to see what kind of questions may have come in. Yeah, thanks, Kevin. Um, great, um, great presentation. Um, uh, thanks for sharing that information. Uh, we're now going to go ahead and take a few questions. So just a reminder, please be sure to submit uh, any of your questions through the GoToWebinar console. Uh, we've had a few questions come in while we were speaking, Kevin. Um, so I think the first question is, uh, who who can qualify for this funding? Uh, and the second part to that question is, what if I'm from Quebec, for example? Yeah, good question. Yeah, so right now the the, the CME program is limited to southwestern Ontario. So your your corporate production office needs to be in southwestern Ontario. You do need to be between 1515 and 500 employees must be around for two years and 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 show financial stability. Uh, in Quebec, um, this grant program doesn't qualify right now. Doesn't mean if you're in Quebec, you shouldn't do a business assessment. Just means that you, you won't get the government funding at this time. Um, the federal government, though, does release this program at different times under different brands. So. If it's not available today, it may come. We don't have visibility on that. But at this time, outside of southwestern Ontario, this program it would not specifically apply to you. Awesome. Thanks, Kevin. Um, second question is, what happens after the assessment? Yeah, great question. So after the assessment, uh, the example that we looked at was that 100-page report. Um, so the the actor assumes that that report has been now signed off by you and you looked at the three options. Typically what we see happening is, as I said, it takes about two months to complete a technology assessment, do the write-ups, come back and review it with people. We tend to find that, okay, they need to digest this. This is a lot to take in. Um, hopefully expectations were set you know, in terms of what options might come out of it and what budgets might look like. But if the output of that is um, low-hanging fruit. Quite often we, we do see that very quickly. Some staff maybe just need a couple days of training as an example to use functionality or use systems they have today and aren't just effectively being used. That would be a very small case scenario. Um, but in addition to that, at the other extreme, it might be uh, yes, we're going to propose a, a whole new ERP system or a new manufacturing execution system or a new CRM system, or we're going to lay business intelligence over top of your current systems. That proposal comes at the end of the assessment. So at the end of the assessment, you get to digest those proposals. Uh, you can shop them around if you want to, to see if somebody else can do it better, cheaper, faster. Um, but usually, again, you'll take about a couple weeks to, to digest that and say, okay, Shay, we're, we're ready to go ahead with phase one. And that, that phase one, again, might be a couple of days training, or it might be a two month small project, or it might be a, a two year, three phase ERP rollout. Excellent, excellent. And and sort of just a caveat that, I think you said it was a 100 page report, but um, I think that would be sort of on the larger size uh, of the reports, correct? Yeah, typically. Um, the, a, a technology assessment might be as little as 15 or 20 pages, again, yeah. depending on the amount of scope and processes that come into review. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, a little bit of rewording I had to do on this, this question here. Uh, um, I didn't want to expose uh, this person's business opportunity. So um, I'm sure if they're on the call, they'll probably recognize it. Um, uh, um, uh, the question is, I'm looking for funding to establish a new company that utilizes AI and machine learning to reduce labor costs as well as optimize operations. Is this something that can help me? Um, there are programs that can help you. If you are a startup, you wouldn't qualify because of the two-year caveat on that. However, there is another um, 
program and I'll have to follow up and get you the contact information after this call. It, it's a consortium that does help bring together different technology innovators. So in this case, um, reduced slavery, you were saying in a, in a company and use artificial intelligence, what, what this consortium does, it would bring different players together. You have a business idea, somebody does artificial intelligence, uh, somebody does technology, and they will bring you together as, a, as three partners to, to build out your future state business case. Um, I think there's a lot of areas that if you're being a startup company today, uh, good examples are, say, food production. One uh, client we talked to in a startup scenario uh, was starting up a company to make uh, Jamaican patties, the food patties that you pick up by a box of a dozen in a grocery store. So they found it was probably best for them to buy a machine that could make about 15,000 of these in an hour from raw dough to frozen, and it only takes three people to run a machine. So that, that was one scenario. Um, another example is things like packaging, packaging machines, uh, way scale integration, um, and that as well too. The uh, machine learning typically would feed back information such as actual cycle times and quality control and that as well. And once the machine learning understands that, then artificial intelligence will use the machine learning to potentially give you warnings of, say, machine failure. A good example of artificial intelligence um, would be as, as machine learning kicks in in an engineering or manufacturing environment, machine learning and artificial intelligence, if you can believe it or not, is going to start to understand your lead times and your forecasts. So if somebody's sitting in a sales pipeline forecasting that they might get an order for a couple dozen machines that you don't normally sell or isn't in your forecast, artificial intelligence will probably be smart enough after digesting this information to come up and say, it looks like you have a proposal you're working on, but you're not going to have enough inventory to make that within the next 90 days unless you place a purchase order. And that little bit of information helps you go talk with the customer and reset expectations on delivery time or maybe negotiate with a supplier to get you know profit in on consignment if you need it or, or, or make sure that the supplier can get you ahead of schedule some product if you need it. Excellent. Thanks, Kevin. I, and I think I would add to that sort of AI machine learning uh, has a pretty broad um, capability in it and would help in a lot of different areas in, in uh, organizations, um, uh, in particular to help uh, optimize your ad spend uh, in the supply and demand space. Uh, next question here, would there be a cost to the assessment between pre-approval and full approval? Um, not engaging Shay. So the pre-approval process, you can apply on online, and again, you can select Shay as your associated one. They're going to come back and say yes, you're you're you are pre-approved, or for some reason be declined. If you have challenges in that application process um, or the pre-approval, that's very easy. I, I, I don't think you have any challenges. There's no cost for you to do that. Um, and then in parallel with that, or, you know, you might want to wait until it's, it's approved, but re regardless, we're not going to charge you to do that ROI assessment, the sample I went through at a high level, because when we actually do the application, we want to submit to say, you know, we want to assess our, our procurement, we want to assess our material uh, purchasing and our planning and supply chain, and this is because we, we see that we should be able to reduce uh, receivables and we should be able to reduce costs. We've already set the benchmark. So that part we don't charge to do. Um, and then we will, with that, help you submit the application, um, say, to do the, the technology assessment. If, and, and uh, just for round numbers, let's assume that's a $25,000 assessment, all costs in. And they come back and say, well, great, you know, we'll pay the $25,000, go ahead and do it. One thing you might want to consider, um, because we do find sometimes navigating uh, federal fundings is uh, administrative bureaucratic to a certain extent. 
Um, we do partner with other companies. Uh, MentorWorks is, is one that's quite common. Some people on the call may be familiar with them. They will handle your whole application process for this grant of $25,000. I believe they do it for a fixed fee of $2,500. Um, and in, in some cases, in other programs, they will also help you uh, look at other fundings. Um, one question that came up uh, was what happens after the assessment. So if you apply for the assessment and you might, you might choose to do it all by yourself, you might choose to pay a service like MentorWorks to help handle that. One of the benefits is they know what needs to be on the application. They have a 95% approval rate. Um, the other thing that's good to work with somebody like that, assuming you decide to go ahead and, and train some people after the assessment, they can also then work with you to get government grants that would cover things like training. Um, I spoke with MetroWorks earlier today, and they were just giving us a head up that, heads up that there's a new program coming also for Ontario that would cover training uh, 25 to 50%. That includes internal costs. So if you are taking people out of work to train them, if you're using internal managers or subject matter experts to train your internal staff, you, you can still qualify for 25 to 50% of those costs. It doesn't have to be external costs. Thanks, Kevin. Yeah, I've gone through that process, the early, the, early, the filing of the form. It seems pretty easy to navigate uh, wherever you're at. Um, probably somebody's looking for some help with that. That's great advice. Um, last question here. What, is Shea, uh, what does Shay do to complete the assessment? Um, will it be done virtually or does it need to be uh, on site? Uh, yeah, good question, um, especially in this COVID world. Uh, we can do them remotely. However, I think they're much better um, when we start on site. So that first kind of business process review, uh, you know, typical might be us sending two subject matter experts on site, either together to work with different groups or, or shadow each other in different departments. and. Um, uh, Sorry, I lost my train of thought there. There um, was how many days old this question, Bill? Is it uh, done virtually or on site? Oh yeah, yeah. So that that initial part, we'd what we'd want to do on site. So we probably send them on site for minimum two days, as much as two weeks, um, for, for process review, data collection, review samples with the team. The rest of it can be done remote. Um, we often do like to come back on site to present the findings and the recommendations and kind of have a final. You know, here's all the findings, recommendations, everybody in the room, answer any questions, and then then leave and let the client digest it. Yeah, yeah. And and we could certainly do the entire thing virtually as well. I think I've done one or two like that. Yeah. Um, so it looks like we covered all the questions, Kev. Um, uh, do you have any notes that you'd like to impart on the um, on the audience before we wrap up? Um other than the scenario walkthrough is very typical again if you're a 10 million or 100 or 200 million dollar business that that's a good scenario if you feel that you know that applies to you if you feel there's potential but you're uncertain it is i think this is a great opportunity to get the government to pay for that assessment uh, they're even willing to say well, you know if we if you think you can do it if the result is don't change that's fine they're happy to know that you're a top-notch manufacturer so i just say why wouldn't you do it and if you don't do it somebody's going to eat your lunch because they're out there innovating today <laughs> yeah i think that that roi assessment is is phenomenal um yeah you kind of get sticker shocked i think when you first see the number but then when you start to see what it's going to cost you if you don't make the improvements. Uh, that was the whole reason the government wants to introduce the funding anyway, right? It's because they recognize that uh, manufacturing in Ontario needs some help to, to uh, be competitive. Uh, so thanks, Kevin. Uh, great, thank you everyone for attending our webinar today. Uh, just to wrap up, if you are interested in learning more um, uh, about the CME program uh, and the funding um, and you would like to, uh, or you would like to get some assistance from us on how to uh, fill out some of the information in the forms or some direction on where to go to get some help, uh, we'd be happy to help you. Our phone number and uh, email contact information is on the form, uh, uh, sorry, on, displayed on this uh, slide. 
uh, please feel free to visit our website for additional information that may be coming available for future events as well as anything related to this uh, event as well and we look forward to seeing you in the future uh, thank you everyone for joining our webinar today uh, we'll see you next time thank you and have a great great day thanks, thanks kevin thanks Bill.